Hi, this is Mikoto and welcome to the Joy of D3JS. Today I'm going to talk about a few different topics. First, I'll talk about a few helper functions D3 provides uh, working with an array. Then, we will talk about how to add event handler for click and mouse over events. Lastly, I'll revise the use of GSVG element and talk about how grouping element will help you in interacting with surrounding elements on mouse events. So let's start with checking out the commits and refresh the server. So Okay, refresh. Hmm. Nothing hasn't really changed from the outside. Let's see the commit diff to see what has been changed. First, instead of having two different day sets, year one and year two, they are combined now. I also added year attributes and changed some values of income and life expectancy. Then at line 28 and 20, uh, 32, I got rid of the magic numbers, uh, these ones, replaced with a function called uh, D3 max, this one. Uh, D3JS has a list of helpful functions to work with an array. Probably it's easy to guess what max does. Uh, there are other functions such as uh, min and uh, uh, sum and mean. One useful function is actually extent, which returns both minimum and maximum as an array, which are used at line uh, 37. So here. Oh, I also noticed that my x and y coordinates are different from what Gapminder shows, so I swap them like right here. Finally, at line ninety nine, rather than sending year two or year one. I sent year, uh, years filtered by year number uh, 19, 1950. <coughs> they are pretty much the same as the last commit, but you can see that the core is slightly tidier and the date is more realistic. So now let's go to the next commit. It still looks exactly the same, but this time, uh, you can see the country name if you hover over the circles. Japan and United Kingdom. Let's see the commit diffs again. At line 81, Instead of attaching data into circle element, now I, I am attaching to group class, which is SVGG. So this is group class, and it's actually a G. Then at line 103, I'm appending a text element to the group with opacity 0, so which is invisible as is. One important thing what was noticing is that I did not have to attach data to both circle and text independently because the G, its parent element, already has data. Then if you scroll up to line 96, I have mouse over event attached to the circle. So the on event handler is similar to the ones in jQuery. The more interesting thing is what it's doing inside the event handler, which is this. Let's look at this picture. 
The one above is how we were rendering circles before. The circles were just rendering side by side. We could just have a text rendered after each circle, but then it's harder to tell which text is associated to which circle. The one below is what we are doing now. You can see the circle and text are grouped under each G element. This structure gives you three advantages. First, you can transform the group of related objects together, just as we did when we moved axes and the circles together. Second, the date is bound to G, so you don't have to attach to both circle and text one by one. Third, this is what we're trying to do here, is that you can traverse the element siblings much easier if it's grouped. Let's actually try it. First, let's put the current context this into global variable. So this, this, so that we can access from the console. Refresh, and you mouse over. And this. This should return the circle. Then you type uh, this parent element, which returns the uh, G element. The most interesting thing is you are now passing this to D3 selector again. So. So you can scope the text to be under the same group. So you can subselect text. So here it's G and here it's text. You may use similar traversing patterns using jQuery and jQuery has more ways to traverse such as next until. But this is a way I have seen doing something similar in D3 not sure if there are much handier way achieving this similar result. So let me know if you know the better solution. Uh, before we finish today, I prepared one playground, which is this. In this example, there are three years worth of annual sales chart so here, where each year has sales figure per quarter. The data. Uh, maps nicely into the bar chart. Up until line 25 here, uh, there's nothing special. You attach the data to G, define scaling functions, then attach text for each year. The most interesting thing is line 24, where you are reattaching data inside G. When you are attaching rectangle, then you are doing the uh, subnesting. So the D variable is now each cells. So D variable here is now the cells figure rather than the object which contains the year attributes here. What if you still need a, a parent object to calculate the Y position? Like here. There are three ways. First, like we did in the last commit of the example, you can go up the element using parent element. That's what we are doing here. Second way is you simply insert year into a value array like this. The third way is since you already know the current index and parent index, you can do like this. So if I do this, this is a current index of uh, cells uh, quarter one, two, three, four, and it's parent index. You can actually see it. So what you can do is data PIDX. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.